Welcome to Antalya and the final block on the opening day of this year's Antalya Grand Slam. Antalya is a popular Turkish resort city with a yacht filled old harbour and beaches flanked by large hotels. It's often referred to as the gateway to Turkey's southern Mediterranean region and known as the turquoise coast for its blue waters. Remnants remain from Antalya's time as a major port. These include Hadrian's Gate and the Hideric Tower. We are, however, here for the, not for the sightseeing, but rather to bring you all the action from the final block on day one of competition. And we're going to begin with the first of the bronze medal matches in the under 48 kilo category. This features Miera La Puerta Comas of Spain. She'll be up against Melanie Leglou Clement of France. It'll be La Puerta in the white jadogi, Leglou Clement in blue. Referee in the middle for this one is John Ramakers of the Netherlands. And providing summary and expert analysis is world and Olympic medalist Annette Berm. Good evening, Annette. Good evening to you, Sheldon, and good evening to you, everybody at home. <laughs> so, we are underway now in that final block. In this category, under 48 kilos, we had 30 competitors. And... Um, I want to have a quick look into the draw, how they did the two fighters here. Melanie clermont Legou in white and blue and uh, Milica Nikulic in uh, La Puerta, beg your pardon, in uh, white. And uh, I want to have a look against whom they fought before. And uh, we start with the Spanish fighter, La Puerta Gomez. So she won his uh, rapid charge, her rapid charge contest and now is here for the bronze medal. But before she lost her uh, pool final against Milica Nikolic of Serbia, that's why that put her into the rapid charge. And uh, her opponent, the French fighter Ligou Clément, she lost her semi final against the Mongolian Bavudor, we're going to see later. And she came directly here to that position for yeah, with possibilities for the bronze medal. Okay, so one loss each has put them yeah. in still with a chance to come up with a medal. An opportunity here for Miglu Clement to work with uh, what initially looked like uh, working on the arm. She changed it to work on the shimiwaza. Yeah, and that's the thing I really like, as, as long as we're going to see something, a process, so they have the possibility to work and continue on the ground. That gives you also the time um, for a technique. Managed to keep the French fighter off from coming up with either the Kansetsu Waza or the Shimi Waza. Good defense on the ground from the Spaniard then. To go over left side, you're not entirely sure that she is um, left handed, but she wanted the big left arm over the, the, the top. Yes, and that gives you control because then you control also the head and you can um, lead uh, the direction and you want to go, but for that you need the head, include the head. The glue. Uh, Legou Clement just guilty of guarding that right side, taking the jacket away, pulling the jacket away with her own arm and hiding it, if you like, from her opponent. And for that, she picked up the Shido. Half the contest gone already. It's gone really quickly without a great deal having happened yet. Both fighters still battling for grips. Oh, she tried to attack there at the outside, left side, yeah. La Puerta Gomez, chances there. Almost came up with the Makikomi. Again, it's Legou Clement working away on the ground, but yeah. again, just kept out by La Puerta. It was a good defense the, this time from the Spaniard. So she kept everything under control, no way to turn her on the ground. Second penalty now already for Ligou. Ooh. That was huge, but did she yeah. bring her down onto her own body or onto the back? That was 
Massive. Uranagi, maybe? What do you think? Yeah, that was a really huge counter attack. And you can see the pressure every fighter has. Have, and um, when it comes to an end, how happy you are. <laughs> you, can, you really can, uh, could see it in, in the face from uh, the Spanish fighter, Mireya yeah. Luperta Gomez. I'm not going to say it was against the run of play because there hadn't been a, a lot going on. I was just saying that there wasn't a great deal happening. And all of a sudden, she pulled that out of the bag. Maybe Melanie Legu Clement was a little bit too loose in the attack, not yeah. strong enough, and La Puerta took advantage of it, possibly in a bad position. We'll have a look when we get to see the replay, but whatever it was that led to it, yeah, she was just, it gave her back to her, back sideways on, bad position, and here was the opportunity. She turned really good, and then she, you could also see that she got a good control with both hands on the judogi, turned her, controlled her. Yeah. Even got a chance for a break fall in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was huge. Minute 30 was left on the clock. Once that arm round went round the waist, good use of the hips as well. Got just below her for that lift. And over, over she went. <laughs> Can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A really happy, happy fighter. Yeah, pleased for her. She's not had the best of luck, but uh, in there really worked. Right, coming up next, the second of the bronze medal contest in the under 48 kilo category. Mary D. Vargasli of Chile goes up against Milica Nikolic of Serbia. It'll be Vargasli in the white judogi, Nikolic in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Ioana Babio of Romania. Anna. Yes, yes, I also have a quick look at back two fighters. It is Vargas Ley who is coming directly from the rapid charge contest, winning against the Turkish air scene. And uh, let's have a look at the main round. Vargas Ley, um, she lost her pool final against uh, Melanie Legou Clement. We have just seen the French fighter. And her opponent, Milica Nikolic, we also mentioned her um, a little bit earlier. She lost her semi final against the Mongolian Ganbata Naranzetsek. And we'll see. Long day. Yeah, we'll see Ganbata in, in the final. But before we get there, we're going to deal with the second bronze medal contest. Nikolic strode to the tatami with <laughs> some degree of purpose written all over her face. Let's see if she can keep that up. She's so many times just fallen at this particular hurdle, having done all the hard work during the day, then ended up with a fifth place. And I promised myself that I'd look, you know, just out of interest to see how many fifth place finishes she'd had in, mm. you know, on the IJF World Tour. Mm. Well, I shall do that right now. Fifth place at the Tel Aviv Grand Slam. Fifth place at Paris Grand Slam. Fifth place in Dusseldorf. Tel Aviv again in 2020. European Games in Minsk. These are all fifth places. Yes. Guangzhou Masters. And and that fifth place is sometimes hide what you have, what, what you have had almost reached. Osaikomi. So, Osaikomi here. Oh, yes. And, and she's done this earlier during the day. Yeah. And without her opponents being able to move, that is so tight. Yeah. As well. Once that arm is trapped in there, yeah. a lot of pressure up in that shoulder. A really good control. Neck area, yeah. Impossible to turn. And this time. Yeah. This time, no uh, fifth place. Yes. She takes the bronze medal. Yes, a big but then I could, I could go down the list of bronze medals as yes. well that she's, <laughs> she's got. Well, yeah. a fifth place finish for Mary D. Vargasle of Chile. That's a good effort. Uh, from the youngster Vargas Lee, but it is Milica Nikolic of Serbia yeah. who takes the bronze medal. Happy days. And that's the for thing. Her. That's the thing with the fifth place. You you can be also in the semi-final, and then you lost that semi-final. You almost have been in the final, 
But then, uh, yeah, you, for some reason you lost that semi-final and in the end you lost uh, the bronze medal contest. It's so close together. Seven bronze medals at Grand Slams. Not just on the IJF World Tour with Grand Prix, but seven yes. uh, bronze medals in Grand Slams. Only four fifth places. I was going through them, but I'd found, yeah. I'd found yeah. them all. Uh, three silvers, never been in a Grand Slam final, but I don't think she's going to be too upset today. She's come away mm -hmm. with... Uh, the, the bronze medal and it's a good it's a second win in the was and she did tap out yes. again that's the second one that we've seen today really well done yeah this technique how she mm. worked that out absolutely control a hundred percent yeah I like that Yeah, why not? Big smile. Yeah. For Melitza, Melitza Nikolic, one of two uh, Serbian fighters who are in the weight in the weight category. Yeah. We come now to the final of the under 48 kilo category. Ganbata Narancetsek of Mongolia goes up against teammate uh, Bavudoj Basanku. It'll be Ganbata in the white jadogi, Bavudoj in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Raul Camacho of Spain and I wouldn't worry too much about the the head-to-head -head between Ganbata and Bavudorj that we can see here the yeah. likelihood is that they've gone up against each other quite a few more times but at home in, exactly. in Mongolia yes and this is always a special fight to fight against your teammate and um, let's have a quick look, Ban Bata, she is a, was coming from Pool A, where the number one seed was Katarina Costa. She lost earlier to Asak, a Turkish fighter. She lost then against Gan Bata and uh, Babu Dorj from Pool C. Yeah. Looks <laughs> as though she's just she takes gone out time. for a walk. Yes, <laughs> for sure she's absolutely concentrated. But these are the similar styles of fighters, you know, somebody is running. The one is running, the other one takes his time. Bavudorj. Bavudorj, uh, for sure. Um, yeah. Is the one who's got <laughs> that bit more energy and punchy yes. um, feel about her. Ganbata just strolled yeah. out there like, yeah. The most important is what happens now. Exactly. <laughs> we, shall, we shall see as it unfolds now. This is the first of our five finals tonight, the under 48 kilo category. You're just breaking up the grip immediately away without taking um, a, a positive you need to hold on to one you, hit, you can't just hold it. break yes. with both hands and then have no contact at all yeah, yeah. On, the, on the left arm on the on the belt from from our ganbata just want to see how long they hold on to that for for us i mean as long as they're positive and they're looking to mm. when i say looking to throw they're actually in the process of attempting to throw that's yes. one thing yes. but you can't hold on for too long and just set it up yeah. and and hold on to it for too long yeah the mongolians are always well known as really upright strong fighters not afraid if you come close to their hip and uh, that makes it always really exciting to see their judo and their judo style it is Right against right side, who got the better control with the right arm, actually, to keep focus there or control, keep control on the head, on your opponent's head. So the best grip is on the back or high at the, the color. Or you surprise with an entry on the other side, <laughs> if they can surprise each other. Second penalty now for oh, Babu Dorsch. Got to be a little bit careful now. Defensive. A little bit too much defensive. Babu Dorsch. It's always to find a good balance between taking no risk, but take enough risk to, to finish it successful, successfully. <laughs> So on the turn of Bavudosh to work on the belt. Couldn't get um, across 
wanted to get that um, left leg a little bit further across. Maybe she also felt the possibility of getting countered. Wants to get the left hand on. Still a little bit calm, but none of them wants to make a mistake. And very often when we have fights uh, with fighters from the same from the same country, it is like that. It's They still really want to and try, but they also know each other so well. And that makes, that makes it so difficult. Vitar can feel that little bit more comfortable with a minute 20 on the clock as she sees two penalties against her opponent, just one to her. A single slip now by Bavadorge would be, would be the end of it. Can't afford a third penalty. Mm -hmm. Just got the feeling that it's Bavudorj, who's doing the searching, doing the looking. Yes, going. She is stepping forward. She wants to go forward, and she knows that she already collected two shidos. Try that low left-sided hip on Sernagi. Mm -hmm. A little bit too far away. Need to be deeper to really threaten your opponent. Gambatar felt that one coming and was able to block it fairly easily. Half a minute left to go. Oh, get jumped in Ochigari attempt. I like that. Yeah, give her a couple of looks, different things. Yeah, yeah. Same direction, but and at least give her something else to think about. Yeah, and come up with a surprise. Mm. Now. Batar now joins Bavudoj yeah. on two penalties. Not the most attractive scoreboard that we've seen. Yeah today four penalties in total but uh, as we figured it out it is really difficult against a, can a, t a teammate it is really difficult but the second penalty I'm sure psychological <laughs> for a short moment would have been an advantage for Bavodosh but she couldn't use it and it was just too defensive right yeah not the way that either of the athletes would have wanted it yeah. to end you know yeah. you're battling away for a gold medal at a grand slam especially Bavu Dorj, who you know showed a little bit mm -hmm. but then she picked up three penalties um, just too many errors yeah. uh, in there and now we see a little bit of excitement from <laughs> Ganbata well they, they are both making their way up that ladder and they come on the back of some pretty strong athletes in that weight category for Mongolia they've had some useful athletes in that weight category yeah but it's Ganbata Naransetse who takes the gold medal well that's the first of the weight categories out of the way, they look fairly happy, don't they? Why not? We've got four more weight categories to bring you. We're going to have the men's under 60 kilo category coming up next. And the first of the bronze medal contests features Rodrigo Costa Lopez of Portugal. He goes up against Francisco Garrigos of Spain. It'll be Lopez in the white judogi, Garrigos in blue. World ranking. Uh, numbers are up there for you, 38, 38 against 9. The referee in the middle for this one is Val van Nesta of Belgium. There's Annette. Yes, and if I have a look to the draw sheet in the under 60 kilo category, today we had 35 athletes. Lopez, um, the Portuguese fighter, is coming from an unseeded place. His opponent here, Francesco Garrigos, the Spanish fighter, was seeded as number two in this tournament. Lost his uh, a semi final against the Georgian, Lukumi Trukmignani. And here, Lopez, we're going to see the Portuguese fighter lost his pool final against Jabba Papinashvili. So both of them lost against a Georgian fighter. Chukumiani is in the final and Papinashvili, the Georgian 
is fighting in the other bronze medal well, we'll see contest. him we'll see him shortly yeah just a little bit taller lopez than garrigos although garrigos is not one of the tallest in the weight category but i must say even the fight before um i mean uh, uh, Lopez had already a rubber judge contest uh, after his um, lose uh, uh, against Papinashvili. He was fighting against an Italian, Pantano. It was, this, was really the same. I think the Portuguese fighter is maybe a little bit taller um, when you compare him to, to the other ones in that category. Well, Pantano, oddly enough, is particularly short. <laughs> so that, that might be... That's I, another thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Garrigos is a little bit taller. But yeah. uh, Lopez, I don't think he's really the tallest. I don't know if you remember Ru Ruben Hocus mm -hmm. of the Netherlands. Denver, he was yeah. exceptionally tall mm -hmm. for the, the weight category. And I also thought that Ludwig Pesha was, you know, maybe slim and, you know, tall enough for yeah. 60. Yeah. That kind of that kind of height. But Garrigos is b below that. Yeah. And Pantano is definitely <laughs> uh, be below that. So I'm, I'm not surprised that that would have looked a little <laughs> bit odd. And there's another one who's just breaking off the grip. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he, the penalty he was given for was for hiding the gi, but really he just broke that grip off. And uh, they're going to have to get a little bit clever in dealing with this. It's been very good during the day. Absolutely, uh, by the way. yes. Uh, and and I've, I've noticed that the athletes are much, much better at working the grips and keeping one and staying positive as opposed to the old-fashioned, you know, just breaking up and moving yes. away, breaking up and starting again. And like here, you know, they would have broken that grip up two or three times. Nice yeah. effort with the Yoko Tomoe Nagi. And that makes it really uh, attractive. That makes it yeah. attractive. And you, you saw Garrigos, no um, argues about the decision. He knew it. And he knew, okay, and f uh, continued. Yeah, and, yeah he uh, knows the rule. I like that, yeah. yeah. That... It is m much more attractive. Yeah. Mm. That was the action. He gets the hand, down, yeah. which which helps him just to stop the turn. Yeah. Lopez picks up the penalty. Half the contest is almost gone. Gone now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And again, every time from the beginning, fighting for a good grip, and then come up with an attack. Lopez is very tall, we mentioned it, so mm -hmm. if you once broke the distance or came close to him, then I think that you really can get underneath him, he got long legs, get underneath him with a big attack and break the balance. Lopez played into the hands of Garrigos there. Mm. He knew that the hand was trapped on one side. You have to get that out. Yeah. And of course, Garrigos was holding it there with, with his head, trying to keep it on one side for as long as possible. But you've got to be a bit more clever than that. You've got to be able to get your hand out. He's picked up a second penalty, a little over a minute left to go. thinking about the left arm around the back but it's Lopez who comes in yeah. with the attack it Mi he misses yes and it looked really promising the beginning had he had the head including from Garrigos just in the end he let go and broke up so we are now already in the last minute two penalties already for Lopez one for Garrigos, both trying the last attack from the Portuguese fighter. He really puts pressure with his right arm there on the back, Lopez, but can't use it for for an execution, for, for a big attack. He, no. He's put in the better attacks so far, the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Garrigos just a little bit behind on attacks for me. He's had... The first big attack he had, but yeah. yeah. But now maybe with a chance, we'll see. Well, it, it, well I was... The action was starting. Ooh. 
No, he, he choked him. Or had an arm lock on. Mm. Could have had the Udigarami. Garami, yeah. yes. Yes. So that was really great, the way he worked it out. You want to have a look at the timing there of the Osakomi because it was out. I mean, clearly called Osakomi after the bell had gone. Yeah. But I don't think... But, but the, the Shimiwaza, was the... Yeah, the Shimi... He, he tapped from the Shimiwaza. So we can see that now. And then they're going to cancel the, the Ippon. Uh, it also removes the opportunity for the Osakomi. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, you're going to have to hope here that Garrigos comes out on top because he's going to feel really hard done by him. Yeah. Anyway, we may not, we may not have to tackle that uh, subject. Let's uh, give Garrigos the benefit of the doubt that not only did he strangle him into submission, but he had him and Osakomi, <laughs> both of which have disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Lopez is um, a cat with nine lives. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's already used <laughs> two of them. So we, we shall see. I wonder if that's done something for him, you know, psychologically, having effectively lost twice. And you think, well, I might as well just give it, give it a go now. Yeah. Garrigos, yes. on the other hand, Maybe thinking, it's got to be my day, hasn't it? You know, just one more. You got a knock in the eye. I think I just needed needed a moment to gather himself. Here comes Garigos again, searching for an opening. Close to the edge. Most the minute is gone. Oh, he lost his grip. That does not look so attractive. I mean, he felt maybe some pressure and then it was the right thing, but similar situation to, no, this time not, um, to before. <laughs> yeah, better really to keep that grip, not to break it up. Yeah, and I think what happened was rather than give... Hmm. They wanted to give him the, the, the chance for the Osai Komi, but there was a false attack before. So rather than call a Mate and give the, the, the Shido yeah. immediately for the false attack, yeah. they let Garigos continue, yeah. see if there was going to be an Osai Komi. Wasn't happening because the leg was wrapped up, so they said, OK, we'll call for the third Shido, and it's Garigos who ends up with that bronze medal. And um, he... <laughs> He probably beat him three times in that in that contest. <laughs> but there was a little bit in there for Lopez. I thought I saw a few nice things from him. But Garrigos, in the end, had the, the beating of him. Right, the first of the bronze medals goes to Spain in the under 60 kilo uh, category. We've got a second bronze medal contest coming up. If Garrigos, bit of time to celebrate. We know him for a long time, since the Junior yes. World Championships where that he won 2014. Second of the bronze medal contest features Dilshodbek Baratov of Uzbekistan. He goes up against Jabba Papinashvili of Georgia. It's Baratov in the white jadogi. Papinashvili in blue. A huge gap between the two. 101 on the world ranking list goes up against number 22. The referee in the middle for this one is Fari Seo of Senegal. Right, and the two fighters. Let's have a quick look at them. Baratov is coming from the rubber charge contest, a win against the Greek, Kara Kitsidi, and uh, before, Baratov lost against Garrigos, so <laughs> it's all connected <laughs> somehow in the pool final, so there he lost against the Spanish fighter. 
and let's have a look at the Georgian Papinashvili. Papinashvili was seeded today as number four and then lost his semi-final against the number one from Chinese Taipei. We're going to see later Yang Zhongwei. Yes, and uh, after that loss, he came straight to that bronze position, place for the bronze medal. I, I did ask some while ago if Jabba was related to Amiran Papinash really, but apparently not. Mm -hmm. It's got to be careful on the edge here. Baratov keen to keep his opponent in, in a difficult situation. Slightly awkward looking effort and an awkward looking landing as well, but it was Papinashvili who attacked and then almost ended up. Mm -hmm. The thing is not to get under pressure anyway at the edge of the mat. You always have to take care where you are, what your position is, and early react not to get under pressure. Well, I think one of the things that, that um, has been highlighted recently is the use of the head in any mm -hmm. throwing technique. So on any occasion when mm -hmm. the head is used, the Pabinashvili has not batted an eyelid. He knew once Absolutely. he'd gone on his head there um, that he was going to end up with the and Sokumake. Yes. Because it's just too danger dangerous. Yeah, and it was clarified by the head referee the other day when he, he, he said any use of the head during a, during a, a throwing technique right, will be, you know, given Han Sokumake. And he also asked, are you able to identify any judo waza that uses the head during the throwing technique and mm -hmm. the answer to that is quite clearly yes no uh, um, and for those of you watching at home he said who might say he doesn't intend to do it no he doesn't and if he does the technique properly then it won't happen yeah yep. so it's Absolutely. the improper execution of a technique that becomes dangerous for which he has been given Hans Sokumake. It's unfortunate, but that can happen sometimes. And it's there to, for us to try and encourage uh, proper execution of techniques and to avoid um, accidents. And I must uh, also say that uh, Baratov, uh, the Uzbek fighters, he's a great fighter. I've seen really great shooter from him today. I like okay. to follow him today. Yeah, he showed a great judo. So, uh, yeah, he he really deserves it. So, I'm very happy for him. He had a great day today. Maybe happy with his yeah. medal then. Well, we come now to the final of the under 60 kilo category. Yang Yong Wei of Chinese Taipei goes up against Lehumi Chukvimiani of Georgia. It'll be Yang in the white Jadogi. Chukvimiani in blue. That's how, how they got to this final. And the referee in the middle for this one is Olivier de Ross of France. Yes, and he will have the two fighters, the number one seed against the number three seed. So Yang is the number one seed. And the Georgian here is the number three seat. Yes, it's gone according to plan then. Well, not quite to plan because it should have been the number two seat, but yes. he got sorted <laughs> out. <laughs> close, it's gone close. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. He must be the most successful um, athlete from Chinese Taipei, mm -hmm. ju judoka. Right up there. He's the number one in the world. 
Olympic silver medalist. Yep. Yes, that's a, an amazing achievement. Yep. Got his hands full here, though, with Lufumi Chukvimiani. Yang lost in the Olympic final to Takato Nahisa of Japan. The Japanese winning the Olympic under 60 kilo category for the first time since 2004 when the legend Nomura Tadahiro yeah. <laughs> won the third of his gold. <laughs> Medals. Absolutely incredible, yeah. It's possibly one of the longest runs without a gold medal. I think the 90 kilos also gave them well, both some had problems. Well, both had a pleasure in Tokyo. Also, Lukumi Trikminyani earlier Lo on. Losing out, yeah. Yes. Vimiani, single Shido on the board. Oh, yeah, that was untidy work. Just a little bit too much. From yeah. Took Vimiani. And it, it, it seemed to have spurred Yang on, you know, taking a, <laughs> yeah. a blow to the mouth. Yeah, he kept very upright, yeah. Yeah. followed his plan. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, for me, it was Chuk Vimiani who just broke yeah. away from that. Mm -hmm. Didn't like what was going on. Gets away with it. <laughs> <laughs> He's uncomfortable with that right hand, I think. Yes, and that right yeah. hand really got a good, gives Young a good control. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really consistent enough. And the arm lock. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't um, Yang who started roughing things up, you know, and it, you could see it. It just got a little bit more, bit, bit, yes. bit more punchy here and there. It's yeah. a contact sport. It is going to be rough. So, and that was a normal technique. And I absolutely. mean, he attacked, and a then immediately the yeah. transition was brilliant. Yeah. It was so quick. I couldn't really see it from the very beginning. Good uh, score. <laughs> and he's straight on to yeah. the arm as well. Here he is. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think he just did not pay attention to to a following technique on the ground. <laughs> Still got a grip there and uses it. Yeah. Time to get on with it. Maybe you won't be so rough. Just stick to the judo now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he gave it out and Yang gave it back. Inside the rules. Absolutely. This is why I love judo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it didn't turn into boxing. Just got a little bit hard. Here he goes again. He's missed, though. I'd love to have worked he's, the Sangaku. He, yes, and Shruk Minyani, when you look into his face, he's not concentrated and focused. You always have something he should really focus on what uh, he's on doing what's on the in front of him. Is that Absolutely. Exactly. On the judo. Yeah, he, got this, he got a little bit distracted. I don't know whether mm -hmm. Yang gave him a, a, a little foot tap earlier on and just roughed him up a little bit. And then he thought he would give some out, but 
And if, if you're going to give it up, you are bound to get it back. I think it's a great little fight. Yes, nice there one. is a lot of tension and yeah, excitement in it. Great. It's a good thing Olivia de Ross is in the middle to try and <laughs> keep it under control. And I think you're just saying that to him, are you? Keep it under, yeah. under control. Yeah. <laughs> Last 50 seconds. The lead here for Young. Consistent with, the, with yes. this Ashivasa. Puts lots of pressure on there. Half a minute left to go. Looking for the turnover. Took for Miani. Even he is on the on on the on the ground. Yeah. He comes up with with something. <laughs> yeah, that's a f that's a thing, uh, a character thing, which really makes Young mm -hmm. special. Yeah, there's always he's always continuing. You never have to feel safe <laughs> until the Mate is coming. He always works things out in a really good way. Well, well it, it's, uh, he it's goes Chuk backwards. Vimiani yeah, who's pulling away yeah, yeah. and breaking them up. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Even if he picked up a penalty, it wouldn't yeah. do anything now. Yang has put himself in the position to take this without any uh, concern. You'll have to wait for the next time, I'm afraid, Chuk Vimiani. Time is over this time. Yeah, Yang Yung Wei takes it. He came under some pressure. Yeah. But he stood stood up strong. Came up with a nice technique. Yeah. And it's Yang Yung Wei of Chinese Taipei who takes the gold medal in the under 60 kilo category. Humi Chuk Vimiani of Georgia has to settle for silver. Let's see the handshake. Yeah, yes, and this it's is a hard sport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The bow, they have to. That's the protocol. And now we just see whether or not they <laughs> is enough left in them to say, okay, yeah, you you won that one. And to his credit, uh, Chuk Vimiani didn't walk off or be bitter. He just said, okay, you're better than I was on this occasion. Yes, this time round. Well, the thing is, he's going to know how to, uh, to, to compete with him next time. You know, roughing him up does not, it, it did not lead to success. Exactly. That should be a good lesson. Yes. Should have been. It should may, have been a good lesson. He may have learned one. Plan B next time. <laughs> good contest. Hard fought. Nice, low, right-sided. Rote Cernaghi that put the score on the board with Zari and then he went straight in to the Kansetsu Waza and it was Vimiani who was strong enough to stand up with <laughs> Yang Yung Wei at the end of his arm yeah yeah <laughs> and, um, and he wasn't going to tap and Yang Yung Wei was not going to let go so he was applying the Shimi Waza Uh, sorry, the Kansetsu Waza, mm -hmm. uh, legally. And um, he decided, I'm not going to tap here. Right, we've got three more weight categories still to come. Before that, we've got the awarding ceremony for the women in the under 48 kilo category that's coming up next there are the four four medalists lined up and actually they're not lined up they're coming on to the podium now the medals are being presented by the IGF general treasurer Mr. Nasa Al Tamimi the first of the bronze medals goes to Melitza Nikolic of Serbia a bronze medal also for Mira Lapueta Comas 
of Spain. Silver medal goes to Pavudoj Pasanku of Mongolia. With a gold medal goes to Ganbata Narancetsig of Mongolia. Mongolians taking the top two spots in the under 48 kilo category. And uh, as Annette Berm was saying earlier on, not always the easiest to face your your teammate. Mm -hmm. We don't know how close they are. I mean, how, you know, same club or same region in Mongolia, but they're on the same national team and the likelihood of them not having trained together is next to, no next to none. They will have worked out together, they will know each other reasonably well. And I think that showed in the final to some degree. And now the national anthem of Mongolia. the winning quartet. Puerta Comas and Nikolic were the bronze medal winners. Bavudorj was a silver medal winner, but it was Ganbata who took the gold medal. And this is, this is so nice to see, you know, they are fighting when they have to fight and afterward they can stand together, shaking hands. <laughs> yeah. Right, coming up next we've got the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 52 kilo category. Bishrelt Kolodoy of Mongolia goes up against Odette Giafrida of Italy. It'll be Bishrelt in the white jidogi, Giafrida in blue. Not exactly where Odette, Odette Giafrida expected to be when she started out uh, this morning. Yeah, she wasn't coming from Pru D. Yeah, Giofrida was one of the top eight seeded. The referee in the middle for this one is Everardo Garcia of Mexico. And we can have, a, yeah, we can have a quick look to Odette uh, Giofrida. So she was in Pool D and uh, she lost her semi-final against the Uzbek fighter Diora Keldiorova, who was in the final, and then straight went into that bronze medal contest. And her opponent here, we're going to see the Mongolian um, Bishwelt. Bushwelt uh, Kodoloi, Pool A, and she lost her pool final against the number one seed Astrid Kneto of France. Then in the rapid charge contest, she won against Geffen Primo of Israel, and now is here, both here, in the fight for Bronx. Bishrelt, she's been improving all the time. She's 
going to be quite a quite a difficult athlete to get past in this in the lead up to the next the next games and in the world ranking at the moment they are really close to um, Odette Frida number nine and uh, Bushwald Konodoy number 12 close close to each other in the world ranking this position the medal here may change that one place possibly two the word depends you know how far down you are on 12 and how far up you are on nine mm -hmm. mm. yeah could be kill the win over Adet Giofrida. It was quite frustrating. So, sorry, it was um, her, her loss to Pimenta. No. She beat Pimenta, lost to Kelda Yorova. It was the yeah. loss to Kelda Yorova that yes. really hurt her. Yeah. You know, you could see it. She was frustrated. And everything that she tried seem to, to, to fail in particular that little shoulder wheel yeah that, that she's developed there that modified kataguruma if you like yes that and that belongs to her main techniques and she can be really explosive and get underneath of your of their opponents but if not then it's a problem yeah when, and when it wasn't working hmm. it really led to visible frustration on her part <laughs> yeah Kelly Yorova, i think managed that contest really well in the end, we're halfway through this one. Giafrida is the athlete who picked up the single Shido at the moment. We've got a little over a minute and a half left to go in regulation time, that is. Low left sided Sionaga, the attempt here from the Italian. One and a half minutes left. So now Ashido given to a Bushwald for passivity. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for this attack, uh, it's the right movement, it's the right direction, but she's not able to get really underneath her opponent to break the balance, to lift her up, to turn her, or start uh, the, the rotation. Uh, it's always a little bit more beside than underneath. Exactly. For, for me, that, that's the feeling that you get, that she's going sideways rather than having Bishrel coming on to her a little bit and getting in a better, better position. Yeah. If you go sideways, then you, you must be, the step must be a little bit bigger, bigger. to Absolutely. get closer to. Yes. Yeah. And then you've still got to do the, the, the pulling in the direction in which you want to take mm -hmm. your opponent. Maybe 45, it could be in a slightly mm -hmm. different angle, mm -hmm. but at least you've got to get over there. The Ashi was up. She hasn't had that working for her today, has she? Yeah. And the, a little bit more serious than to threaten a little bit more and to, to get the reaction she wants to. It would be good. Half a minute left on the clock. Both Bischrelt and Giafrida have picked up a single Shido in the first of the bronze medal contest in the under 52 kilo category. Where we had today 35 athletes. Also a good number here for that competition, for that Grand Slam. Ooh, missed that Uchimata attack. Bischwald. Okay, so we have no score. Everybody won penalty and we start now with a golden score. Which means the next score. Or, and that is what we don't hope, <laughs> the third penalty. 
would make the decision about who wins that bronze medal and who come up as a fifth. But still, everything is completely open. And I think with the beginning of that golden score, it is, it, it's an extra motivation because one last time, go in and throw. And then it's over. <laughs> She's not, she doesn't got that space to Frida to, to, to move and to come up maybe with the Kataguruma. She is really fixed from, from Bishwelt with the grip. Yeah, Bishwelt gives every impression that she knows what's yeah. coming. Yeah. And she's quite up to keeping it out. Yeah. The only problem with that is that if, if you're concentrating all your efforts on keeping your opponent out, you're not really opening up yourself and coming up with any attacks of your own and at the, at the very least what can be said about Jeffrida is she seems that little bit more active than Bishrel and, and there's the result mm -hmm. uh, a second penalty for Bishrel who yes has kept Jeffrida out but in order to to do that she's her own attacks have dried up yep. and she picked up a second penalty minute and a half of golden score has already gone Bishrot just tidies the gear up in readiness for getting back underway as a little stab at Koji from Giafrida. It's followed by another one of those missed Uchimata with the leg just going way yeah. up yeah. in the air. Yeah. Just shows that the support leg is not hasn't moved at all to get anywhere near the target. Close area. to or underneath, yeah. Yeah. Because at the very least that you should do is to make contact with the inner thigh. That was a little bit uh, closer from Bishrel, but on the two previous occasions, she's just been wafting at air. And now she does get closer. That's as close as she's come, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And you really could see that she really tries, she tries to lift her opponent up. So she stayed in, uses um, the leg, the right leg, to lift her up, but still or so far not possible to really turn her and come up with a, with a score. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's, it's when the left leg, which is the support leg, gets in between her opponents and turns that she's got the best possible chance. But as long as it stays that far away, then it's not going to happen. Well, she gets a penalty for a false attack. And and it's the Jeff third penalty. Wins out. Third penalty. Yeah. Jeffrida blowing kisses to her fans. <laughs> well, Jeffrida can only do what you know is, is put in front of her, and if you've got an opponent like Bishrel, who's going to be that little bit I don't know just on the back foot slightly negative doesn't come up with the big attacks then you're not going to have the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the bang them up smash them up fine um, medal contest that you're looking for but Giafrida did enough to put the pressure on uh, Bishrel slowed her down Bishrel was not able to keep up with the attacks. Picked up a third penalty and it was Afrida, Giafrida who came away with the bronze medal. Right, we come now to the second of the bronze medal contests in the under 52 kilo category. Larissa Pimenta of Brazil goes up against Astrid Neto of France. It'll be Pimenta in the white judogi, Neto in blue. The referee in the medal for this one is Val van Nesta of Belgium. There's Annette. Yes, and uh, let's have a look at the two fighters. The Brazilian Pimenta and uh, Astrid Neto. Astrid Neto the number one seed here, 
in this tournament. She lost her semi-final against the Hungarian Pop Reka. And uh, let's have a look at the Brazilian Pigmenta. She lost her poor final against Odette Frida, we have just seen. <laughs> so Pimenta then won her rapid charge contest against the number two seed here, Chelsea Giles of Great Britain. And now she's up against the number one, <laughs> the number one seed here. Astrid Kineto in blue. Yeah, and the Brazilian in white. So the Brazilian, 23 years young, and uh, I think her biggest biggest success, or the highest, I mean, it was in junior level. An important step to get to senior level, the bronze medal at the Junior Worlds 2019, collected already some Grand Slam medals, a silver and two bronze. Yeah, so not really that long hmm. out of juniors, to be honest. And, you know, mixing it with some reasonably experienced company, in particular with regard to someone like Odette Giofrida, who's been around for quite a, quite a while now. Yeah, that is right. And Astrid, two years older... Also at junior level, she, she collected two junior world bronze medals quite a few years ago, but already a good Grand Slam medal collection at home. Two gold, two silver, two bronze. <laughs> Both fighters pick up Chinos, but it's a second penalty for Neto. walking forwards, trying to place her right hand on Pimenta's back or on, on a color. Well, I don't think that the referee's going to have a lot of choice in this if they don't get on with it. They need to come to grips with each other and then from whatever grip they manage to take and they've got to try and do something from there but not to grip up to continue just to move around search and move out and come back again and have mm -hmm. another look and mm -hmm. you know at some stage he's going to say right I'm afraid there's not enough attacking going on here she got a strong grip now but she must use it also no, she can't stand the pressure Pimenta it just only looks like a step out. She picks up a penalty for stepping out the area. She'd avoided that in a previous exchange. But once she got the once Neto got the arm over mm -hmm. the back and brought the head down, then Pimenta felt really uncomfortable. She wandered off to the edge of the competition area and then Neto just put a little bit of pressure on mm -hmm. and Pimenta gave up a second she learned she's on the, on the edge again you know, you've already been warned over there or if not that particular spot then on the opposite side you've already been warned about going off to the edge avoid that you know, close down those unforced errors that, did, that didn't have to happen
good reaction here from Pimenta. What? And just in that moment where the French fighter wanted to come up with her right arm and for a big attack, Pimenta put her own right arm in with the Koji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The just unsettled, yeah, unsettled mm -hmm. Neto for a moment. Yeah. But that was a, a good way of not only getting in an attack, but stopping your opponent yeah. from being in that dominant position. But there's one thing when you feel that the right arm from your opponent is so dangerous, and it is, Neto's right arm is, as soon as that arm got a grip, it's difficult. Why does Pimenta not try to get that arm first? It's always the other, the grip first from her side with the other hand. It's interesting. And then she's waiting and hoping not to. That, yeah. And that uh, makes her also looking, defending, more defending that this arm is not coming close to her. But why not to get the arm first? And, you know, this is a tactical thing. And then continue. Again, the first, the first grip is there under... under on the right lapel. L under lapel, yeah. From Neto. Thought about the OG uh, guy. As soon as that right hand is getting the grip, it looks. It doesn't look good for the opponent from Neto. <laughs> from all of the opponents. She is so physically, she's so strong. We've had a minute of golden score already. Ojigari from Neto just driving Pimenta off the tatami, the right sided Ojigari. Pimenta was able to hop off that. Mm -hmm. She actually hopped off the competition area to avoid getting caught. Got to come back with her own attack there. Just blocked with that right arm when she thought about going left-sided. She used that movement from uh, the Brazilian. Couldn't end it up with a score, but just overtaken the, the initial movement from Pimenta. Neto. A score will win it, as will the first penalty will lose it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good description. But it's at this point that you really have to set aside some tactics and be a lot more brave. And this hanging around, waiting for a grip, you, r you run the risk of being the one who gets penalized for being passive. Yeah, absolutely. And this attack it was left-sided, but I think you need a better preparation. Either you're quick enough, or you better prepare with some ashivasa, uh, with an attack to the other direction, and then come up with your main attack. Two and a half minutes now already in Gordon score. Across the face, I think Val Van Nesta, the referee, deciding yeah. he's going to put a stop to that one. It was the attempt there for a choke, yeah, but it was across the face. Yeah, coming up to three minutes of golden score now. Neither fighter able to burst through the defences of the other and come up with a positive score. Beginning to look more and more as though another error is going to be committed. So they almost always got the grip when they are outside. <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, Neto's previous fight, the semi-final against the Hungarian Pop. It was also a golden score. 
And from the beginning, uh, my feelings were that she is the stronger one because she is physical, so physically very strong, but it was pop in the end. And it was, I think, also a decision made by uh, a penalty, so a little difference. It was a great fight. We will see who has the better ending this time. just isn't enough urgency from either of them, to be honest. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Four, four minutes into golden score, you'd want one or the mm. other of them, maybe both if you were lucky, yeah. to realise that you know, there's, a, there's a medal at stake here. If, if I do anything that is silly, hang back for a little bit too long, you know, put in a weak attack, I'm going to get penalised and I'll lose that medal. I've got to do something to make my opponent be the, the weak one in the attacks or force them into making some other kind of error. I'm not sure that that is the thought process here. Oh, well, not the way that we would have wanted that contest to end up a third penalty being picked up by Larissa Pimenta of Brazil that gifts the contest to Astrid Neto of France You can see she really looks tired. It was a long day, hard fights, tough fights. Some of them into golden score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that will take it out of you, won't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Almost five minutes of golden score. And remember, when the clock runs and we say it was four minutes and 49 of golden score, that's only the time that the clock went for. The rest of the time when the clock has stopped, you're still yes. out there for, so they were yes. probably out there for about 15 minutes, if yeah. you think about it. Yeah. And also, if not so many things happen, it is really, you really need to have a good con uh, condition. Yeah. Otherwise, after two minutes, <laughs> you, it, 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 it's, it's done. Physical, you need to be quick, explosive, you need to have the condition over the whole time to start explosive attacks and and then you need to have a good plan against your opponent <laughs> well we've seen the two bronze medals going first of all the way of one went the way of Geofrida, Adet Geofrida of Italy the second went the way of Astrid Neto we come now to the final of the under 52 kilo category. Pupreka of Hungary goes up against the Yora Keldi Yorova of Uzbekistan. It'll be Pup in the white Jodogi Keldi Yorova in blue. World ranking 5 and 10. So both in the top 10. And the referee in the middle for this one is Ioana Babiuk of Romania. Here's Annette Byrne. Yes, and you maybe just saw it, uh, the head-to-head -head was one to nil for Pop. And but if I, I'm really impressed and uh, what Diora Keldiorova showed today, I mean she won against the number two seed here, Olympic uh, bronze medalist. Then in the semi-final she won against the Olympic silver and bronze medalist <laughs> Shofrida, and now she's in the final and she shows really brilliant judo. But so far, we're going to have some, some highlights. Yeah, we've just got a, a few yeah. clips in the lead up to the 
into the final of some of the action from earlier on. I was saying La Prieta, La Prieta was that? Yeah, La Prieta yeah. Comas had been unlucky um, on a few occasions and she was definitely lucky at one of the junior events. I remember going and chatting with her and her coach and that may very well be him here. It's not always the same coach um, and at different levels you'll have different coaches responsible for either the cadets or mm. the juniors or the seniors and sometimes even club coaches who have brought that particular athlete through and are allowed to travel with the team and are brought on as extra coaches. Different countries have different ways of dealing yes. uh, with it but I think that that was the, 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 the coach that I spoke to and they, they were slightly unlucky in a, in, a, in a particular situation but they dealt with it reasonably well and since that she's had uh, she's had some better luck <laughs> yes had some better luck we took the medal here of course the the two that are watching now um ganbata and uh yeah her teammate in the final in the under 48 yes yeah bavudorge may yep Lopez, we saw him early on the Portuguese and <laughs> Garrigos. That was a good battle. I think, however, in the final block so far, it was um, the final of the under 60 kilo category with Yang, Young Wei, and Lahumi Chukvimiani. That kind of stole it for me. Um, I think that is almost uh, a, re a reflection of what we see in, in the sport. You, you come to uh, uh, judo and you are you know that you're going to get a few bumps and, and scrapes I, I think that there are very few sports especially at that high level I mean e even tennis is physically uh, demanding and I've seen once or twice where a player has been hit by a tennis ball I wouldn't call it a contact sport but you know it can be <laughs> It yeah. can be a bit um, testy at times, especially if a volley is hit directly back at an opponent and there's a feeling that it may have been done deliberately. You know, that, that kind of creeps into it. And most definitely with um, Yang Young Wei and Lukumi Chukvimiani, I think there was some, uh, some uh, testy moments, if you, yes. if you want to say. And it always is dependent from the character, you know, the, you have very calm uh, characters and, yeah, very emotional and, yeah. Yeah, but I thought it was um, a, a, a difficult situation was handled uh, very well by Yang Yung Wei. Here, here he is. He never looked as though he was losing his cool. He just stepped up the, the toughness a gear. Absolutely you know. impressive, that was, yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely not impressed and continued his way with a brilliant, brilliant judo. <laughs> he made his opponent feel crazy. <laughs> From every angle he attacked and found a solution. Found a solution. Chukvimiani <laughs> yeah, wasn't very happy with that but it was Chuck Viniani's choice to either tap or try and lift him off the tatami to cause a mate or bring a mate about and um, he chose the latter <laughs> <laughs> you, you run that risk Geoffrida and Bishrel well We have seen Geoffrida um, performing better. She's not. Yes. I think in boxing they call it ring rusty. Yeah. You know, just a little bit ring rusty. So it may, there may be a, a, a little bit uh, in, in, in that. But um, still, she managed to take the bronze bronze medal and then the only other um, contest that we saw was the Larissa Pimento Astrid Neto 
um, contest, which um, Neto ended up taking. Yeah. So we can look forward to Pup Rekka then, who, oddly enough, has been around for quite some time. I remember seeing Pup as a, as a cadet. She's coached by Brown Akos, former world champion. I think from Cairo, 2005. From Cairo, 2005, yeah. 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 Goes yeah. back <laughs> quite a way. Up against Diora Keldiorova of Uzbekistan. And we are we're looking forward to seeing what happens with countries like um, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, who are developing their women's programs. Absolutely, and I'm really happy to see that. And not only to have somebody there, also to have somebody with really great f uh, throwing skills. We will see when it comes to now to, to that final. Right, and uh, here is the final one head to head before. Pup Rekka coming out on top. Pup Rekka of Hungary in the white jalogi goes up against the Yora Keldi Yorova of Uzbekistan in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Ioana Babiuk of Romania. Sorry for that delay. I think Ioana may know the words to this one. Kind of yeah, <laughs> singing along there. Yeah. Well, it was, a, it was a slightly unusual situation being delayed there. Referees are normally, you know, 100% you know, on the job. I'm not suggesting for a moment that Ivana Babi wasn't. She just got caught unawares there with the cameras. On her head comes Pup Rekka, and there is the aforementioned um, Brown Akosh coming in, all, all suited up and yeah. with his spectacles on, and there is... Diora, Keldi Yorova in the chair for Keldi Yorova. Marka Spitka. Yes. The he's, German. Yeah, he's gone over to um, <laughs> Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. maybe. Oh, nice effort there from Keldi Yorova. Um, maybe Ilyas Ilyadis has um, persuaded him. What's her? 23 years old, Keldi Yorova. Continental champion, junior world champion. Yeah. Tell you what. Yes, at 48 kilos. That was way back, 2015. Yeah, at the cadets. Cadets, yes. beg your pardon. A cadet. Yeah. Huge gap in between that, though. Yeah, absolutely. Popreka fighting for a medal at the um, Olympic Games in Tokyo. She became fifth and lost her bronze medal against Odetsu Frida. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows everybody. <laughs> Making their homework analysis and yeah, work on special tactics and strategies. First um, minute out of the way. And they faced each other before, and it was in this year at the Tel Aviv Grand Slam. And it was poor Rekha oh. who won. Yeah. Well, maybe Yorova. It could be the yeah. other way around. Come it up was, with the score. It was also a bronze medal contest. <laughs> so similar situation. What a quick and powerful. Yeah. Really, it, the skills, incredible. Yeah. So the lead for the Uzbek fighter. It's, it is still plenty of time, but She's not a fighter who says, okay, not, now I'm only defending. She, she, you can really see she really likes to, to fight, to attack, and to throw. She's put away some good opponents. I think that she'll get penalized for avoiding to take a grip here. It was Pup who mm -hmm. was coming forward, looking to get to grips, and Kelly Yorova, who was backing off. And I, th I think we, we saw one earlier on, a contest where... The athlete led by Wazari with two minutes left to go, just over two minutes left to go, and without the penalty. Well, Keldi Yorova has picked up a single Shido. So if she's going to go down that route of mm. shutting up shop, she's going to have to be very clever mm. with regard to how she goes about it. Because 
can't afford to pick up another penalty and then leave yourself with plenty of time left on the clock and start getting really nervous there. Oh, that was a really strong attack yes. here from Pope, the Uchimata on the right side. And yeah, got a good control. They took it back. It was, I would say, it was really close to. Maybe just a little bit missing there for the score. A yes, little bit more. I agree with you. <laughs> so still the lead here for Keldia Rova. Oh, this time it was yes. clear. Yes. <laughs> she repeated it. And closed that gap. The last minute now. Everything open again. Pope is happy to work on the ground. Well, you, you'd gone over once before. You have to feel that where that pressure is. Mm -hmm. Start thinking, okay, that's a strong side for Pope Brecker. Let me try and close that down. Mm -hmm. A little bit slowly. I don't know if psychological it is now a little bit harder because you know, okay, I had the lead and my opponent closed that gap. Oh, the outside attack for a moment. It looked really good. Yes, and again, again. <laughs> that was, wow, brilliant throwing skills here from Poprika. I didn't expect that to be honest <laughs> well, she, had to, she had to dig deep come yeah. back from a wasari down she had two minutes in which to pull it back mm -hmm. she did it with 19 seconds to spare and in the end yeah i mean the second technique she, she actually threw her three times yeah in in that two minutes once it was um on not quite on the side and that was taken back second time it leveled the scores and then the third time well it leveled her so that's a super effort from Pup Reka. yes and also a really good result for uh, Diora Keldiorova she wins um, the silver medal she wins silver yeah. yeah not to forget I mean of course you are disappointed losing um, your last fight but uh, we were going to see her then on the podium again and good points important points and another step for her I think I don't think she's ever been in a final before has she oh she has been in a in a grand slam final so she okay, has been your in and it was this year fresh the the Antalya grand slam uh, okay, this well, just now here, but then. the entire Grand Slam from from, look, from last from last year. year. Yes, so which he won. Yeah, which she won against yeah. the Lopez Sheriff from uh, from Spain. And so she was the defending champion. Exact, <laughs> exactly, but still in the final. But, I mean, and, and back it back here in the final. So yeah. that that's a terrific result, really. Yeah, uh, and it, and it just goes to show that what we were talking about with the. Um, the, the programs that they've got in mm -hmm. Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, mm -hmm. in pushing and promoting their women's programs. I don't. I, I mean, I don't think you bring Marko Spitka to um, Uzbekistan for a holiday. He's there to do a job, yes. and he's coaching the women's team. Yeah. It, likewise, I don't think you send um, Mark Vanderham and. Rich, uh, Richard Trautmann mm -hmm. to Azerbaijan for a holiday. They are there to do a job and it's a signal that they are serious about developing their women's programs. Right, we come now to the awarding ceremony for the men in the under 60 kilo category. Medals are being presented by the Ambassador of Chinese Taipei in Turkey, His Excellency Mr. Volkan Chinyang Huang. That's nice, get a, get a wave <laughs> from His Excellency Huang. The first of the 
bronze medals goes to Dilshot Bek Baratov of Uzbekistan. There's a bronze medal also for Francisco Garrigos of Spain. Silver medal goes to Lukumi Chukvimiani of Georgia. And the gold medal goes to Yang Yungwei from Chinese Taipei. And who better to be yeah. dishing out the medals than the ambassador for Chinese Taipei? Yeah. Proud movement for Yang. Up to now, for me, he's been the player of the day. Really enjoyed watching mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Gutsy, calm, nothing flashy. You know, did exactly what he was supposed to. Technical, brilliant. Yes, Re really enjoyed watching him. And not least of all, because... um. You know, we've spoken about it before, but uh, as I said, it's a contact sport. It is going to get a little bit rough, and um, Chuck Vimiani, for me, was looking to dish it out a little bit, you know, yeah. test the resolve of um, Yang, and he, he found out. <laughs> and now the national anthem of Chinese Taipei. Well, um, Yang Yung Wei follows up his impressive silver medal in Tokyo. He now comes here in 2022 and kicks things off fairly early in the year, in March, with a gold medal at the Grand Slam here in Antalya. Baratov and Garrigos were the bronze medal winners, Chuk Vimiani took the silver and there is a, a smiling and beaming Yang not so happy with Chuk Vimiani on one side let's have a look and see how they finish uh, up uh, yes he's really disappointed yeah, you're gonna come and shake yeah come yeah. in yeah yeah you okay Paul yeah he's not having what any what a big sport he's not having what any a big sports but Yang is. is yeah yeah really really <laughs> right okay moving <laughs> swiftly on yeah to the First of the bronze medal contest in the under 66 kilo category. Tal Flicker of Israel goes up against Orkan Safarov of Azerbaijan. It'll be Flicker in the white, Jadogi Safarov in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Olivier uh, de Ross of France. Unfortunately for us, Safarov picked up an injury earlier on and won't be able to compete. So Tal Flicker comes to the mat. That's the bow. Yeah, comes back and takes the the result and off he goes. Tal Flicker taking the bronze medal. Sorry we couldn't bring you that one, but uh, it happens from time to yeah. time. Yeah. 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 So we had to um skip that one. That does mean, however, that we can move swiftly to the second of the bronze medal. Contests. Yondan Perenli Bashku of Mongolia goes up against Sador Nurilaev of Uzbekistan. It'll be Yondan Perenli in the white Jadogi Nurilaev in blue. Number three in the world goes up against number 11. They've gone head to head once, as you can see from there. Yondan Perenli was the winner, and the referee in the middle for this one is Raul Camacho of Spain. Here's Annette with the background and the tail of 
how they yeah. got here. Yes, and it is the Mongolian who was seated today as number two. And uh, he lost his pool final against William Lima, the, against the Brazilian. And uh, Nuriyarev, the US big fighter, the, he made it until the semi final and there lost against the number one seed. Dennis Yeru, we're gonna see in the final. So the two of them now on the bronze medal contest. Yonton Perenli then the front rapid charge contest against Buncic, the one he won, and now he is here against uh, Zador Nurilayev of Uzbekistan. The Mongolian number three in the world bronze at the World Championships last year. Won the Paris Grand Slam this year. His opponent a gold medal at the Tbilisi Grand Slam last year. And the Mongolian collected a penalty early. And Perenli picked up yeah. uh, a single Shiro. Yeah, we've still got plenty of time. Yeah. Just battling for grips. I like that look over there for the possible Osodagari over on the, the right there. And he shaped with the hip and the leg and then decided, no, I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah. <laughs> but he has shown it. Nuriyev may have felt it. Some fighters... You know, they, they transmit it. it when, when they hold you, mm -hmm. you think, oh, I've got to look out for this. Mm -hmm. And then others, they just... Come on, Chuck, a nice roll into the arm lock there. And Yonder Perenli gets caught. Wow. Yeah. That's terrific work from Nurilayev. And I, I think I'm right in saying that they're not necessarily known for their Neowaza skills. <laughs> yeah, that is right. All, so all also of a sudden... A surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent work from Sador Nurelayev to catch Yonder Perenli Bashku of Mongolia. With that neatly executed Kansetsu Waza. And he takes the second of the bronze medals. We, we had Tal Flicker, of course, we didn't have a contest with Flicker. Safarov um, wasn't able to compete, but. At least we got some action from Yonder Perenli and Nurilayev, with Nurilayev coming away as the winner. The highlights, well, I think we're going to be limited to the Kansetsu Waza. Yeah. But it was a good one. Good one. That's a good pick. No chance here to escape. Good roll, and whilst he was ro rolling, mm. already the Mongolian felt the pressure there. Yeah. yeah this this is the angle that Iliadis can can see. Yeah. He was the coach there. No, it isn't actually. It's from out, out. It's from this side on. He's on the far side with the referee, so that would no. have been blocked. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he gives uh, the finger point. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's for you, coach. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> Another medal for the Uzbek team. Mm -hmm. Yonder Perenli felt that one, didn't he? Yeah. Real grim, no doubt. grimace of pain mm -hmm. from him. We s we've seen a few in pain today. 
Uh, Gultaj Mamadalieva of Azerbaijan earlier against Chelsea Giles, getting her uh, arm locked. She's okay. I went to chat with her. She just had um, a little strain in the tendons, the doctor said. Right, here we go with the final of the under 66 kilo category. Dennis Fierro of Moldova goes up against William Lima of Brazil. It'll be Fierro in the white Jadogi Lima in blue. Referee in the middle for this one is John Ramakus of the Netherlands. And here with her expert analysis and summary is Manet Berm. <laughs> yes, and one of the finalists, it is uh, William, Le William Lima from Brazil. He was uh, um, so not cheeky, but he threw out the number two, he threw out the number three, <laughs> Yonder Perenli and Safarov. And now he is here, there he is. William Lima, now he des really deserves it to be in the final. His opponent, Dennis Vieru. So he went through that draw with beautiful techniques, beautiful judo. At the Portugal Grand Prix this year, he won gold. Last year's Abu Dhabi Grand Slam was also the gold medal. And yeah, 2019 at the Worlds, he won the bronze medal and he's always around and there's a reason that uh, he is really at the top in his category. He's the world ranking leader, Dennis Fierro. One of the most exciting throwers as well. Yep. Absolutely love to watch when he gets it right. Just so, so perfect. Today we're going to have 41 athletes in this category, so th the list was full of names and all of the fighters who went until, yeah, the quarterfinals and semifinals, long fights, long and, and a long day, a long day for them. Well, Lima doesn't look as though he's going to hmm. just roll over, does he? Control was a little bit missing and the distance a little bit too much. Maybe it's that little bit of action from Lima that will wake mm. Vieru up. Yeah. to get underneath a good turnover there on the ground from uh, Vieru. Both really explosive fighters. Vieru, I don't know if you can look at his record, how many finals has he been in recently always seems to be there or thereabouts won the grand prix in lisbon back in january won the grand slam in abu dhabi in november mm -hmm. and then um, so, so if you went from september of last year he was in the he won zagreb he won abu dhabi he won you know every every so often he's on that podium it, not there or thereabouts on the number one spot. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Yeah. No wonder he's number one in the world. He almost got caught there. Lima, nice right sided low. Marate Sernagi. At the Olympics, he didn't have that, that luck. He won in the first contest against Nurilaev, but then in the second yeah, contest. Daniel, Daniel Kaufman, yeah. The Brazilian. He lost no medal. For sure, a big disappointment. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. You get the hard work done, get to the games, and then just doesn't go your way. Well, he hasn't got that long before there's another um, <laughs> yes. qualification cycle kicking off in a couple of months' time, I think, isn't it? 
we get underway with the qualification cycle. I'll give you the exact month, actually, because I've, I've got it here. Start of the qualification period will be in June. Mm -hmm. First competition, first qualification competition will be the 24th and 25th of June. It'll be the Grand Slam in Ulaanbaatar. We go back to Mongolia. We haven't been there yeah. for a while. That had been on the schedule for quite some time, Mongolia. We're looking forward to going back to Ulaanbaatar. Minute left to go. Both fighters have picked up a shido each. The attempt here on the right side and then straight into the other following technique from Lima. Lima's He's all over him at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really going to have to put himself together. He hasn't threatened Lima at all. Lima it is who almost came up with the score there. That's the end of that action. That's mm -hmm. just a roll yep. at the end. So the referee in the middle didn't even look at it. One time, at speed, move on. That's why they are uh, they're in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> John, John Ramakas, good, good call. That. Well, a good no call, because he didn't, he didn't say anything, did he? He, didn't, he wasn't tempted into thinking that that was one movement. Last few seconds of regulation time, this looks very much as though we're going to need a period of golden score to sort it out. Yeah. Koji Gari right at the end, but it is going to be in golden score that this one gets decided. bit too far away there, Lima. No need for that. Six seconds into Golden score. Too desperate. Big lunge. Way away from your opponent. Didn't need to do that. Oh, he attacked the, this long legs from Vieru, <laughs> Lima. Tried to get behind him. That looked, it looked dangerous. Vieru would have liked a little bit longer on the ground. I think yeah. that, that's what that look on his he face. He a little bit surprised. So, yes. Yeah. Yep. He stared at the, the referees if they say, are, are you sure? Ramakas <laughs> 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 didn't think it was going anywhere. Called Mate. Yep. It's probably right, actually. Yep. I need to burn a little bit of time off the clock just to gather himself. And exactly. Get back into it because... Lima, to be honest, has been doing doing most. Apart from these two penalties that he's picked up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's looked really more good. Active, yeah. And that last one, that little drop there, was so unnecessary. He could have avoided that. He tries to turn him and counter him. I, I see his concern now. Yes. Oh, Vieru. Going in on that right side. If he's not low and strong, then he feels as though Lima is likely to counter him. The Moldovan coach asked to just tone it down a little bit, just coach during the, the mate. Fierro hasn't been hit at his explosive best. Oh dear. That's the decision. How unfortunate for yeah, him. Yeah. The first penalty. Mm. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to have a, a, a replay of the step out, <laughs> because which it's is what clear. William Lima yeah. has asked for. When, when an athlete steps out, it, it, it seems almost impossible for me to think that an athlete will step out without some pressure 
yeah. from his opponent. Yeah. Right, how much pressure you, you put, how much pressure you put, well, clearly it cannot be a push out because a push out would be a penalty to Vieru. Yeah. But you can't tell me that that a, a, a little bit of pressure on the edge is going to make you step out. At least it all almost always started from, yeah, more or less the center and yeah. you've got time to... And how did you get there to and... Go both directions. Yeah, left or right. Exactly. Why go back? Yeah. That would be too easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunate that uh, it ended that way. Yeah. However, that's the way that one went. And Dennis Vieira ends up on the number one spot. Right, coming up next, the awarding ceremony for women in the under 52 kilo category. The athletes are up now, ready on the podium and the medals are being presented by the Youth and Sports Ministry Sports Services Head Mr. Fatih Uysal and the previous um, President of the Turkish Judo Federation. Nice to see Mr. Uysal again. The first of the bronze medals goes to Astrid Neto of France. There's a bronze medal also for Odette Giofrida of Italy. Silver medal goes to Diora Keldiorova of Uzbekistan. But the gold medal goes to Pupreka of Hungary. Now the national anthem of Hungary. A second Grand Slam gold medal for Pupreka of Hungary. She won her first last year at the Baku Grand Slam. And now smiles all round as she wins a second goal, this time here in Antalya. 
Yeah, every, everyone's happy on that podium. Well, Anna, that brings us neatly to the last of our weight categories yes. for today. It's the under 57 kilo category. And the first of the bronze medal contests features Team the Nelson Levy of Israel. She goes up against Krista de Gucci of Canada. It'll be Nelson Levy in the white Jirogi. De Gucci in blue. Eight goes up against 15. They've gone head to head twice yes. on both occasions. It was Taguchi who came out on top. The referee in the medal for this one is Roberta Chiolia of Italy. Yes, and uh, Krista de Gucci uh, was the defender last year. She won here in the final against her teammate Jessica Klimkate. Um, she is in the final again, but this time it is Krista de Gucci fighting here for a bronze medal. Lost her semi final against Lara Zaha Leonie Susik, the French fighter seated here as number three. And um, then let's have a look to her opponent, Timna Nelson Levy, um, the Israeli fighter, lost her uh, pool final against uh, Jessica Lima of Brazil and then won her won her rapid charge contest and now is here against Chris Sadeguchi. So what, what you're saying in short is that um, if th th it's possible that uh, Canada can retain the title. It just wouldn't be... Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. It just wouldn't be the Gucci that would be winning it. It would yep. be Klimke. Well, she's, we shall see when the final comes. Uh, Sarah Leonis Sassik, no doubt, has got something to say about that. <laughs> Strong grip from Nelson Levy on that left collar. Got the right hand just squeezing into the neck and just bringing the Gucci down. Yep. The Gucci may end up picking up a, a penalty here. Yeah, okay, got away with that. Bit of rough and tumble. Yeah. Down so she goes. maybe this is powerness against technical brilliance, brilliancy, <laughs> if that word exists. No, uh, I think Nelson Levy also knows that she has to keep the Gucci under control, really close to her, because she is so strong and throwing, so, so quick, yeah, always dangerous from every position. She's thrown for it on a couple of times today. We haven't seen... Mm -hmm. Her involved in any near was her. Well, she's been busy throwing them, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Again, the head is down and that's not where she wants to be. Got to no. get out of there. Doesn't look good. Yeah. And we need to find a way of dealing with that. Yes, and Nevi has out gripped her up to this point. She's had the better of the gripping exchanges and looked, well, if we don't say the, the more likely to throw, we can definitely say she's looked the stronger of the two. Mm -hmm. Gucci looking to free her hands up. She's thrown with Osodagari a couple of times today really well. Very low, almost on the ground, this right-sided Ochigahi. Yeah, that looked more of, more like, I better try something. Mm -hmm. So at least I've got an attack in, as opposed to, I really think I can throw with this uh, technique from, from this position. Yeah. So not the, not the strongest of attacks, but at least she managed to get one in that broke up this, this pattern of Team no being strong and dominant in the grips and then overpowering her. They both get penalized here for avoiding to take a grip. To be honest, I'm a little bit surprised, expecting to uh, see the Gucci a little bit um, stronger. Or 
here in, in that fight. So that means, on the other hand, that uh, Nelson Levy is doing a really good job. Well, she's picked up a second penalty to Gucci. Yes. Again, for avoiding to take a grip, which really does put her under some pressure now. Oh, I missed the chance on the ground. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get given many. This is dangerous with that yeah. grip to attack yeah. at the outside. Hey, uh, You've been countered easily. Yep. Yeah. Didn't look good, did it? Just going to the ground there. Didn't like the strong grip. Tina Nelson Levy has outgripped the Gucci, managed to get. And now it's Nelson Levy who picks up a penalty. <laughs> So no more penalty allowed for both of them. Again, she's got no, no answer to a grip around the head and just looks like a rag doll. Well, at least she had to come up with something. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, uh, I think also Le Nelson Levy has to come up with something. Absolutely. It's not only pulling down, yeah. you must yeah. show a little bit more a throw and an attack. Well, right now, I think the first thing was to avoid getting thrown. Um, she's done that. Tima Nelson Levy has done that up to this point. Close down any attacks that Taguchi can come up with. She's done that too. And then maybe see if you can come up with one of your own. Yeah. And that's, let's have a look. That's a good thing now from Cristiano Taguchi. She just fixes that arm, which causes problems. Okay. Just couldn't use it in this situation because Nelson Levy was the cleverer one to attack. But I think this to cut control about the arm. It's uh, important for the Canadian. One thing that she hasn't been able to do in that four minutes, nearly five minutes, is find any opportunity to work in Niwaza, mm -hmm. which is a real. Mm. You know, it was one of her biggest skills. Hasn't had an opportunity. Can't keep that right arm off. And only once has she been able to come up with an attack when the right arm has gone on. Ooh, lost her grip. Almost on the ground. Something on her finger, maybe the nail. She got some medical treatment and will be back soon. Yeah, it's difficult for us to see from here what it is that she's going to have looked after. Something to do with the nail, as it said. Gives us a chance to hmm. statistics. There you go. But yeah, it also gives us a chance, Annette, to see if we can think of a way that Deguchi can get back into this because I just had the feeling that she's been dominated when it comes to the grip. She's been uncomfortable yeah. with the arm over the top, the con controlling the head, pulling that down and then making it near impossible for her yeah. to come up with any attacks. Mercifully for her, Tim the Nelson Levy has been concentrating on just dominating that. Mm -hmm. And as you said, not really offering up anything herself. But, um, but I think before you realize that she is not offering anything, uh, you see the defensive uh, posture from Costa de Gucci. And, uh, yeah, that, exactly. That's, that, that's, that's what you problem. look at. Yeah. 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 That's what and catches your eye. Yeah, exactly. And of course, Cristiano Gucci tries from that defending looking position. She tries still to attack and the attacks, attacks are not bad when she attacks at the outside. But um, still, it looks completely different. Somebody who has everything under control, a strong grip and somebody who is, yeah, can't, can't really stand the pressure. And 
yeah, don't find, doesn't, doesn't find it, she does, doesn't find really a solution. That one solution was to keep that arm, because she needs that arm anyway for, for attacking. But can she stay strong enough to continue with that? Straight into the attack there, the Gucci, and then Nelson Levy looking to mm. come up with mm -hmm. one of her own. Both fighters have got two penalties. Neither yep. can afford an error now. And this is really a dangerous situation. If you break up the crib, yes, from then there. that's it. And both don't uh, don't not, do not re really feel happy that the other one. Got the, the grip there on the, on the sleeve. Oh, that does not look good. Yeah, I mean, they say that Deguchi ducked underneath in order to avoid getting wrapped up in that unattractive exchange. Well, there you go. And it's Tim the Nelson Levy who takes yeah. that bronze medal. We said from the outset, as, as we saw that developing, finding it difficult to deal with that, you've got to find another way, yeah. and not just dropping to your knees or staying down there. Once she came up with an attack, she just came up with an attack once, and definitely not ducking underneath. Yeah. I think she tried everything to get out of that situation, yeah. Sheldon, and uh, that just happened. She tried everything to get upright again. Mm -hmm. And her opponent was going to make sure that she did everything to mm -hmm. keep her down and yes. look negative. Yeah. Three Cheetos picked up by the Gucci. And those are errors that you absolutely have to cut out and give yourself you know, a, a better chance and, and avoid getting in that kind of situation. The, the, the Shido for ducking underneath was not the one that ended it for her. It was the fact that she'd picked up two before. You are absolutely right. But I think, on the other hand, this ducking underneath was not the clearest ducking underneath. Because not I think at all. It could the be hand, the hand, the hand was pushing Levy over was there. already yeah. there, yeah. a little bit almost yeah. across, you know, and she just wanted to, to come up and, 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 she, and, and on the wrong side. And fight again. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I've got no doubt that she wanted to get involved in a, in a contest that didn't end that way. Mm. But when you pick up three, I don't think you've got yeah, much of a complaint. Absolutely. We come to the second of the bronze medal contest in the under 57 kilo category. Tomo Montero of Portugal goes up against Jessica Lima of Brazil. It'll be Montero in the white Chidogi. Lima in blue four goes against 94. Wow. The referee in the middle for this one is Fariseya of Senegal. Yes, and uh, Tema Montero seeded here as number two. Lost her pool final against Krista de Gucci, we have just seen. In the rubber charge contest, uh, she won against Lien. Lien from Chinese Taipei, and now she's here for the bronze medal contest. Her opponent, Jessica Lima, uh, won her pool final against Nelson Levy, but then lost to Jessica Klimkate in the semi-final. Both here now with the chance for the Bronx. Sometimes I see Montero coming out of an exchange with a fighter and you know, there's a bit of a bump or a bruise or something, she catches up, you know, mm. she's holding her chin or she's holding her mouth, her eye or an ear gets bumped and, and, I, and I wonder, is it going through her mind, you know, do, do I really need this? <laughs> <laughs> Still. <laughs> she has 
Yeah, yeah. Taken and her place as one of the seniors on the competition, hasn't she? Yeah. Uh, on the competition circuit, go ahead. Yeah, and it's also her way of fighting, always trying to get underneath, trying to get close for her uh, techniques. Sarah Manassas, the Olympic champion from 2016 in the under 48, right? 12. Oh, 2012, London, 12, for, yeah. yeah. So, coach. Now the coach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think also that style um, causes sometimes the things she had then on her head. <laughs> Yeah, she looks sometimes annoyed at certain situations. Mm -hmm. If someone roughs her up yep. or something, you know, it's as though they, they are a, an annoyance to her. It's almost as though they get on her nerves, you know. <laughs> She's not yep. angry with them, it's yep. just... Yeah. I suppose... She expects a certain degree of respect at this stage of her career. <laughs> who, who are you to rough me up? <laughs> <laughs> she forgets that um, in years gone by, <laughs> she was the one who was doing the roughing up <laughs> on her way up. Yeah. You roughed a few people up, <laughs> didn't you? The attempt here from from the Brazilian, a little bit too far away, distance. When she attacked Montero, there, low. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's yep. hard on my on my foot yeah. <laughs> and Menez is saying keep going you haven't done anything wrong yeah keep doing it more of the same <laughs> <laughs> a minor apology yeah from Lima there just a wave of the hand towards Thelma Montero more movement that Lima puts in, the better. Almost turned. Yeah, she tried to counter her in the last seconds. And the past seven here in Antalya. A long day for the fighters. Some of them kicking off at nine o'clock this morning. Ten hour, ten hour day then. Yeah, it's yeah. a long time. Absolutely. And Chigari again. Attempted. Sutemi so was up from Montero. Yeah, just took her onto the crown, but couldn't turn her or bring her on her on her back. A slight delay now as Lima has to have some attention. This is the second of the bronze medal contest. We've got the final to come up next. But there's no score as yet between Mateo and Lima. Does this favour Montero a little bit more, do you think? The break for her, is that more needed than Jessica Lima? Yeah, to get emotions under control and to to focus. And uh, as you said, it was a long day. She, was, she belongs to the experienced fighters. And also, I think this little break to take a deep breath and start from new, yep. We've got a little over 
a minute left to go. Le left sided low effort there from Lima. Montero is able just to move to her left and avoid getting caught up mm -hmm. in that. There's some tape either on the chin. I think it must be the chin of Lima. That's not going to stay there that long, is it? That's Temi right. Was up that was a good one. From Montero. very difficult to apply the tape once the athletes have been perspiring. <laughs> Tends not to stay on that long and then there's contact and... Yeah, yeah. And it just gets pulled off. We will see, yeah. 40 odd seconds left to go. Lima looking as though she's been in the wars a little bit. She tries to get close to Montero. Oh! Ashi she was up. Did she, was she, was did she get a control? I mean, Lima. at the same moment yeah. Montero wanted to attack, but did she get control enough and uh, came up with the Ashiwasa? Yep, I'll go for that. That's it. Yep. Kosa Dagari, left sided. The there left it, there leg. it goes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 When seen at speed for the first time, it's possible. Good reaction. No? Yeah, that you could, because the right leg looked as though it was going up for some kind of Satemi Waza, mm -hmm. but it, it comes after, it comes after the action from, there is the first action. Lima's already tapped the leg yeah. for me. I, I, I'd like to see them go with a score for Lima here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no chance to argue. There are these moments where you want to attack in the same moment yes. your, your partner attacks, yeah. but then the attack from your partner. No doubt that the Satemi was. The, it counts, yes. Was in the mind of Montero on the way down. And she even didn't lift her opponent up. You know, yeah. she landed on her on her yeah. on her back. She had control. Oh, she's she's so happy. But crying. For me, for me the, the contact and the intent from Lima was already there. Yeah. On the way down, but after the contact, sorry, not on the way down, but after the contact from Jessica Lima, Montero wants to initiate, wants to attack with, um, Wants to attack with some kind of Satemi was there, but yes. it's, it's after the event. It fa and yes, and it failed. And yeah. Yes, it doesn't matter if it failed. You're right. It was right after. Yeah. And maybe she made that preparation step now here, but it, yeah. No, I think. I mean, so okay. we, we can talk about whether it was a score or not. Yeah. And then maybe you want to talk about whether it was Ippon or not. Have a quick look at this then. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we, we've got two yeses there <laughs> for Jessica Lima. Shown over and over on the screen. One more time. Yeah, that's good enough for me. The foot, the foot working with the hands to come up with the score. Bronze medal for <laughs> Jessica Lima of Brazil. She can get rid of the, rid of the tape now. Come now to the final of the under 57 kilo category. Jessica Lee, Jessica Klimke of Canada goes up against Sarah Leone Sisig of France. It'll be Klimke in the white jadogi. Sisig in blue. One goes against five. And did you get to see the head to heads there? I did, and it is four to two. Yeah, so they, they faced each other. <laughs> Uh, six times yeah. now and four times it was Jessica Klimkate 
Oh, one, two times, Sarah Leonie Susik. Roberta Curlia is the referee in the middle for this one. Yeah, we mentioned it already. It is uh, maybe going to have Sarah Leonie Susik, the number three seed here. Olympic. Yeah. Silver medalist, medalist, silver yeah. medalist, and Jessica Klimkate, Olympic bronze medalist, medalist, the number one seeded here, and yeah, she she repeated what she did last year in Antalya to get into the final, and uh, she can only uh, end up here better. I, I mean, I mean, yeah, she can only uh, um, improve or not not getting not getting worse because. Uh, she can't silver do any last worse. year. Yeah, she can't yeah. do any worse than she did yeah. last year because she got silver. It's already yeah. silver and chances now to, to improve that one and come up as the winner here. But we will see. I'm going to expect a tough fight. Wow. 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 Powerful. I'm really impressed. She always really gets good underneath. Yeah. She, she got a good, a really good position, strong position when she gets underneath. May want to have a look at the landing. Yeah, and comes out then. So explosive. Yeah, her arms, really beautiful. Oh, I think that could be it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it, that could be it. It could be it, yeah. And that was in slow motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here comes the death knell. Cancel that one. Hip on. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you d definitely oh, for me. Incredible. That was done. Twenty odd seconds as well. Well, just though. Yeah. Wow. She is just really strong. Yeah. Yeah. Whack. Now the important thing about the four-two that we didn't mention was four-two. It was four-two to Jessica Klimke, but the last two occasions that, that they had met, Sissy could won. So yeah. it was an uphill battle yeah. for Klimke because she'd lost on the last two occasions. Once at the Olympic Games in Tokyo, the revenge, yeah. as you like to call it, yes. revenge. <laughs> and then in the Masters in Doha, Doha in 21, so lost twice last year. Yeah. This, um, this year, new, Je well, not new, yeah, new, new Jessica. Chapter. New <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> yeah. She's taking it here. So five to two now. Five to two. <laughs> this is beautifully executed. You know, you know your strengths. And a lot of people belly ache. Imagine that what, what the, the talk will be is, oh, she's only got one technique. <laughs> How many do you need when, <laughs> when you throw like that? If you win. You know? So, <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> no, it's not. And yeah. um, she has uh, excellent awareness. And she's got a really good brain when it comes to timing. Yeah. You know, knowing when to attack and how to attack in different situations. Very clever fighter. Mm -hmm. We come now to the awarding ceremony for the men in the under 66 kilo category. The medals are being presented by International Judo Federation Head Sport Director, Mr. Vladimir Barta. The first of the bronze medals goes to Sador Nurilaev of Uzbekistan. There's a bronze medal also for Tal Flicker of Israel. Silver medal goes to William Lima of Brazil. But the gold medal goes to Denis Vieru from Moldova. Not quite the player of the day 
today. Normally is when he's on the uh, top of the rostrum. But today, well, well, it was April Fool, wasn't it? <laughs> Taking the hand away during the handshake. We haven't had that for a while, handshakes, at the medal ceremony. Pandemic still playing a role. Let's hope that we've seen the, the worst of it. Get back to some degree of normality. And now the national anthem of Moldova. There are the four medalists who can remove their masks now. We get a family photograph without the masks. Tal Flicker tucks his mask into the inside of his yes. shidogi that he normally uses to keep his phone. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got one more awarding ceremony to bring you before that. I think the team have put together a bit of a highlights package. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. Coming up next, the awarding ceremony for women in the under 57 kilo category. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the medal ceremony for the women's under 57 kilogram category. The medals. 
going to be presented by International Judo Federation Events Director, Dr. Lisa Rowler. The first of the bronze medals goes to Jessica Lima of Brazil. There's a bronze medal also for Team Nelson Levy of Israel. The silver medal goes to Sarah Leone Sissi of France. The gold medal goes to Jessica Klimke of Canada. Number one here and world number one. Yes. And really and at the moment champion. she deserves it. At the moment, mm -hmm. she's yeah. number, number one. <laughs> no doubt, and that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, really. Absolutely enjoyed watching her. Look, the perfect timing, also the way she went in, she is going into a throw. She gets very deep underneath, and a good contact with her, both of the hands. This classical. Yeah classical style and a good control that also means that you physically your shoulders must be in a good um, if, yeah. have you seen her shoulders <laughs> for 57 you see yeah she's strong right and now the national anthem of Canada Time for the final family picture on this, the opening day of competition at this year's Antalya Grand Slam. There are the four um, medalists. It was Lima and Nelson Levy who collected bronze medals. Sazik had to settle for silver this time round. And Klimke stepped one up yes. from last she year did. and yeah. took the gold medal. We can take a look at um, the standings in the medal table on this first day. Top of the tree, Mongolia with a gold and a silver. The gold medals also for Canada, Chinese Taipei, Hungary and the Republic of Moldova. We can go a little bit lower down if you like. And, uh, look at the silver medals, Uzbekistan, France, Brazil, and Georgia. There'll be more medals on offer over the next two days because mm -hmm. we've got competition here yes. on Saturday and Sunday. We look forward to your company then, but from Annette Berm and all of the broadcast team here in Antalya, it's goodbye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>